Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I'm of the stars. Uh, I have some comments today on a ballad variously known as The House Carpenter, the ballad of James Harris, and The Demon Lover. In the past, The Demon Lover was meant to be a warning for married women not to stray. I feel that's important, especially if they have children. Uh, but more important to me, uh, because I've run into it many times amongst men, is the soul wounding exhibited by men who are uh, who were once in love with a woman and then are spurned by her, and who take up and and then are spurned by her, and then she takes up with another man and. And what happens if she goes back to them? Or what if happens if she leaves him even and then goes back to him? And it just has to do with some, some very gnarly energies in the newosphere, in the astral realm here on planet Earth. I'm using a public domain version of the ballad from the Internet Archive. The source is Pepe's. P-E-P-Y-S ballads, and it's right long, but very interesting historically. It starts off with the overview of how the whole thing started, and it goes like this. There dwelt a fair maid in the West of worthy birth and fame, near unto Plymouth, stately town. Jane Reynolds was her name. This damsel dearly was beloved by many a proper youth, and what of her is to be said is known for very truth. Among the rest, that's among the rest of her suitors, among the rest a seaman brave, unto her a wooing came, a comely proper youth he was, James Harris called by name. So this man is a sailor. And amongst all the people that she knew, all the men that loved her fondly, the one that she decided upon, set her cap upon, was named James Harris, and he was a sailor. Now, in those days, a man and a woman be, would become betrothed, and that was a sacred trust. If that resulted in offspring before marriage, then there was a law called breach of promise, that held the man to his former word. So, so becoming betrothed was an extremely important concept at that time. And even to agree that they would soon marry, that's equivalent to a betrothal. And that pertains to this next stanza. The maid and young man was agreed, as time did them allow, and to each other secretly they made a solemn vow that they would ever faithful be, whilst heaven afforded life. He was to be her husband kind, and she his faithful wife. A day appointed was also when they was to be married, but before these things were brought to pass, matters were strangely carried. Okay, so that's the setup. They secretly agreed that they would be married, and a day was appointed for the marriage, but then something happened, something really bad. So now begins the ballad proper, which is number 243 in Pepe's, called James Harris, the, the Demon Lover. All you that faithful lovers be, give ear and hearken well. And what of them became at last, I will directly tell. The young man, he was pressed to see. That means he was forced to go to see. And forced was to go. His sweetheart, she must stay behind, whether she would or no. And after he was from her gone, she three years for him stayed, expecting of his coming home, and kept herself a maid. Maid means maiden, means never having experienced romantic love. At last news came that he was dead within a foreign land, and how that he was buried she well did understand, for whose sweet sake the maiden she lamented many a day, 
and never was she known at all the wanton for to play. So in all that time, when she was dealing with the grief that she felt for her lost beloved, she, she never fooled around, she never had a lover. She was true to his memory. Okay, now, a carpenter that lived hard by, when he heard of the same, like as the other had done before, to her a wooing came. So he went to, the, to her place as a suitor. But when that he had gained her love, that is through courtship, but when that he had gained her love, they married were with speed. So it's not the drug, it's they were quickly married. And four years space, being man and wife, they lovingly agreed. So for four years, they agreed to be loving man and wife together. Three pretty children in this time this loving couple had, which made their father's heart rejoice and mother wondrous glad. But as occasion served, one time the good man took his way some three days' journey from his home, intending not to stay. So the husband went away for three days, away from home, and left the mother with three children there in the home. But whilst that he was gone away, a spirit in the night came to the window of his wife and did her sorely fright. That means a ghost or spirit or astral being made an apparition or, or appeared in her home while the man was away, which is the time that the woman is most vulnerable and frightened her and did her sorely fright. So now the spirit speaks. Which spirit spake like to a man and unto her did say, My dear and only love, quoth he, prepare and come away. He's asking her to go away with him, the spirit. You may recall the name of her first suitor, the one she really loved so greatly, was James Harris. Okay, so now to continue. James Harris is my name, quoth he, whom thou didst love so dear. And I have traveled for thy sake at least this seven year. He's saying he was looking for her for seven years. And now I am returned again to take thee to my wife, and thou with me shalt go to sea to end all further strife. He's suggesting that she should go to sea with him to prevent the husband from fighting with her. O oh, tempt me not, sweet James, quoth she, with thee to go away. If I should leave my children small, alas, what would they do? No. Okay, starting over. O oh, tempt me not, sweet James, quoth she, with thee to go. Please, please, please don't do that. O oh, tempt me not, sweet James, quoth she, with thee away to go. If I should leave my children small, alas, what would they do? My husband is a carpenter, a carpenter of great fame. I would not for 500 pounds that he should know the same. So now she says no. She said she can't do it, that her husband is a famous carpenter and that she loves her children and that she, she can't imagine what would happen to them if she left them. Now it's the, now it's the demon lover's chance to respond. He says, I might have had a king's daughter and she would have married me but I forsook her golden crown, and for the love of thee. Very forceful, huh? Therefore, if thou thy husband forsake, and thy children three also, I will forgive thee what is past, if thou wilt go with me. And she says, If I forsake my husband and my little children three, what means hast thou to bring me to, if I should go with thee? She's saying, where would I find myself? What do you have to offer me if I should agree with this? Okay, so now I'm going to move on to 
uh, ballot 243G, which is a different version of the same demon lover. The, um, the lady is asking the apparition, the ghost. She's saying, what have you in store for me? What, what property do you have? What could you offer me if I were to went, go away with you? And the demon lover says, I have seven ships upon the sea laden with the finest gold and mariners to wait us upon. All these you may behold. And I have shoes for my love's feet, beaten of the purest gold, and lined with a velvet soft to keep my love's feet from the cold. Then I'm presuming they get on the ship. And he says to her, Oh, how do you love the ship, he said, or how do you love the sea, and how do you love the bold mariners that wait upon thee and me? And she says, Oh, I do love the ship, she said, and I do love the sea, but woe be to the dim mariners that know where I can see. So she's on the ship with the apparition. It may be a ghost ship. And he proposes that there are sailors on board taking care of the ship, but she can't see any. So already there's trouble. They had not sailed a mile away, never a mile but one, when she began to weep and mourn and to think on her little wee son, her little very small son. Now it's a demon lover's turn, he says. Oh, hold your tongue, my dear, he said, and let all your weeping a be, for I'll soon show to you how the lilies grow on the banks of Italy. They had not sailed a mile away, never a mile but two, until she espied his cloven foot and from his gay robe sticking through. Okay, so there's something wrong. In the man that she used to know is not the same as he used to be. In fact, he has a, a diabolical aspect to him. So what is this that happens when she loved a man and the man went away and deserted her and then finally married someone else and had children and then he returns, if only in her mind, okay? and begins a campaign that she should love him and not this new person. In other words, the apparition is jealous of her happy life, of her happy married life. Or even it could be, I feel, that the person who once loved her feels telepathically that she might find someone else that loves her, and then becomes in aspect, in demeanor, something like this demon lover. He turns enraged, he does whatever he can to destroy her. Okay, so there's just a little bit more to this. They had not sailed a mile away, never a mile but three, when dark, dark grew his eerie looks and raging grew the sea. He was in a rage. He was an enraged, jealous man. And many men descend to this after they leave a woman. Instead of moving on to a new love, they s cannot release themselves from that old vow. They cannot move on to someone new. And consequently, they destroy the life of the person they once loved and their own life as well. Do you know what I mean? Very bad things can happen when a man does not allow a woman to move on when he can't stop stalking her husband, when he can't stop trying to destroy her love for him, you see. Okay, the last stanza. They had not sailed a mile away, never a mile but four, when the little wee ship ran round about and never was seen more. It could have been one of those upside down tornadoes in the sea that sinks the ship into the sea? No. Jealousy is the dark opposite of love. It can happen in a woman too, but in this case, what you have is a woman who adjusted to the loss of a man, 
and the man who comes back and haunts her telepathically and brings her to ruin because, because he himself has turned dark and sour, you know? And, you know, many men think this is just how it is. Whether a man is spurned or who, a man deserts a woman, that, that the man will feel cruel to the end of his days and, and injure the woman to all he speaks to, you know? But I don't feel that way. I think many men adopt a very useful attitude towards women they once loved and, and pick out all the good things that happened at that time and look forward to those things in a new relationship. That's what I think. You know, there's always trouble amongst women about men stalking them and men trying to rape them and men trying to kill them and all this awful stuff, you know, simply because we have a lot of hard energy and the men think that they can take advantage of us for that reason, you know. It's, it's a terrible situation here in the third dimension that all of us women have to face, that, that men can be protectors, but when they become jealous, when they become enraged, they can take the strength that God endowed them with and use it against us too. Well, I wish the best for the women of Earth because without us, without our children, without our nurturing and educating abilities, there would be no human life on Earth. And I, I hope the men will understand that we have great value, we women on Earth. They're not the only valuable people on Earth. You know, I, I'm asking you not to be arrogant simply because you're strong. Strength is only half of the ingredient, you know. The other half is grace and love that women bring into a man's life. Well, that's the sober last of it regarding this ballad of the demon lover, otherwise known as James Harris or the house carpenter. And, uh, the interesting thing is that in years past, in the ancient days, it was purported to be a warning to women not to leave their husbands. And so you have that, that side of the issue, the male side of the issue, and now you have the women's side of the issue. So maybe those two will make a copacetic whole. Got Here's a footnote. These versions of the ballad came from Pepe's Ballads, number four, 101, from a copy of Percy's Papers, and I got them from the Internet Archive, https colon slash slash archive.org. Now you know. Okay, so this is a footnote number two. Someone asked me on the psychic plane why I didn't just move on uh, and find someone else. Um, sometimes what happens is that a person, while themselves not stalking and so forth, um, has a negative attitude that they convey to their friends and their friends take it upon themselves to give a woman her just desserts. I don't know if you've run into this or not. So a guy who's well-liked and has lots of male friends can enlist a hundred people, a hundred strong, self-willed, arrogant, I have to say, men on his side to, to take up for him in, in terms of, you know, there's a lot of dark interference today to take up for him in terms of um, stalking and harassing and raping and and if it doesn't happen on the physical plane it can happen on the on the astral plane you know this is something that women have to deal with all the time i i never heard of a case where a man was so so um unforgiving 
that every time his ex-wife would marry, he would go and harass and the, the husband, the new husband that she had until that man had to leave. He'd be afraid to stay with the woman and that this happened many times, you know. I wouldn't want that to happen to me or to any man that I liked. And so a person has to consider the, the greatest good for the greatest number of people. If, if two people are suffering because of my action of, of becoming romantically involved with someone else, instead of just me suffering because I don't have that romance in my life, why I try to pick the thing that's the, the least damaging to the most number of people. And so that's why I'm, that's why I'm steering clear of men, is because I don't want that crap to happen to them. It may have happened to someone else, you know. It's really gruesome when you come right down to it. So that's the story. I would like to interject right here why it is that I spoke sternly to the songbird. Um, it seems to me that that behavior of that particular songbird wasn't typical of a songbird. It is possible that if a songbird were very upset over the tenor of, a, of talking, of the emotions, it might might speak like that, but I don't feel it would go on and on like that. There have been a numerous incidents of shamans, I don't know who, walking into the animals that I talked to in the last few weeks, and I think this may have happened with this songbird. I'm really against shaman. I'm really against shamans taking control of songbirds and of ravens and of hawks. I think it's a very a very stupid idea to do that. For one thing, every time that you enter a being that's not a human being, your soul matter becomes more similar to theirs and less similar to that of other humans. If you continue with that, at the end of your lifetime, you're likely to be um, reincarnated as that animal rather than in human form. Many people long for human form because of the degree of of free will that they have in that, so uh, most people, if they stop to think, wouldn't try that walking into the form and skin of other beings that are not human for that reason, because it degrades our human soul matter. In recent days I've found that animals do have free will, many, many animals do have free will, and it's only human hubris or pride that prevents us from realizing this. So it might not be that bad if you don't mind being incorporated as a songbird in, in your next incarnation. It's bad for the birds, though, because you're trying to, to rule over their free spirits by doing that. It's as bad as if you did that to a human being, trying to mind control and leap into the skin of a songbird. It's a bad thing to do from that perspective, from the perspective of wanting to retain your own free will, you see? Because you develop your free will and you allow other people to have free will too. If there's nothing but power over in the world, there's no such thing as free will. You have none and other people have none either. So help us to create a world that's good for everyone. Don't be a shaman who jumps into animals and controls them or into human beings. I bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days. In love, light, and joy, this is Alice B. Claggett. I am of the stars and so are you. My website is awakeningwithplanetearth.com. See you there.